Welcome back to my channel. Now today we are going to talk about latest topping D30 Pro back. Now this is a very interesting one because as you might remember, one of the first DACs ever that Topping released was called D30. It was some four or five years ago. Um, and this one is called D30 Pro. Now, basically, the only thing what these two have in common is a DA chip converter that comes from Cyrus Logic. And it's the exact same chip. But that's where all the similarities end. Because first of all, D30 Pro uses not one, but four of these DA conversion chips. Why is that? Well, because Topping's engineers found a way to use multiple chips to increase final resolution and noise level, crosstalk, so in theory, this should be much better, much more modern device than the original D30. That was a really good DAC for its time and for its price, which was just around 100 US dollars. But this one is a different beast. It's 400 US dollars. And as I said, it uses four DAC chips, but the differences don't end there either. It's a completely different device. A lot of you are probably aware that the DA conversion chip is just one small part of a whole back. For example, a power supply is a big part of it. And uh, unlike actually many other entry-level topping backs that use 5 or 12 volts DC and they're powered by a wall wart, by a small power brick, this one, as you can see, has IEC inlet. That means it accepts 220 or 110 volts AC, depending on the region where you live. What this means is that the whole power supply, AC to DC conversion, uh, power conditioning, power filtering, is located inside of the unit. You just need a power cord and that's all. Other than that, circuitry is also completely new and reimagined. And again, we have that power supply section, then we have a signal receiving section, which means what kind of receiver chips and, re uh, and programming on them will handle the incoming signal. And finally, the output stage on every DAC is analog. And it usually contains some sort of operational amplifier because a small signal coming out from a DA conversion chip needs to be amplified a little bit. So we basically have our first amplification section, like a first small preamp inside of the DAC. And depending on the operational amp being used, a sound can vary significantly, even with the same DAC chip. And all of this just because I wanted to say, just because this DAC is using a little bit older Cyrus Logic chip, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an old product, that it's, it has nothing to offer because it's exactly the opposite. The only thing it shares with that older and cheaper D30 is part of its name and DA chip, but it uses four of them and the circuitry around it is completely different. And that actually leads me to the D30 Pro itself. What is it, how it performs? But let's start with build quality and connectivity. First of all, build. It's completely made out of aluminium. And it's not just a thin sheet of aluminium that you can press with your finger and bend it easily or anything. It's actually a very sturdy build. I feel that every part is thick, it's sturdy, and you feel that it's relatively small device, but it's weighty. It has that hefty feeling. And if I put it uh, on a desk and I connect some heavier cables, like a heavier, weightier power cord or weightier interconnects, it will not move from its place. Next part is connectivity. 
And here it's important to say that D30 Pro is actually a pure DAC. So no headphone output, no wireless connectivity of any sort, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi. It's just a DAC, meaning you have three digital inputs, USB, optical, and coaxial. And for me, that's plenty. That's all a decent DAC at this price point should have. When it comes to analog outputs, we have two pairs. One of them is very typical single-ended RCA. For most of us that still use RCA single-ended amplifiers. The other set of connectors is actually a balanced one, XLR. And the only thing basically that divides D30 Pro from being a bare-bone DAC is that you can choose to use these outputs in a DAC mode, meaning you get fixed line level out in case of single-ended RCA, that's 2 volts, but in case of balanced outputs, that's 4 volts. That's very common, it's almost like an industry standard. But you can also opt to use it in a preamp mode, which basically means you get a variable output. Now, it's just attenuation. You don't get higher voltages. The maximum is still 2 volts and 4 volts, but you get the attenuation. It might be good for first help if you have a power amp or active speakers. You do not have preamp. You can use this one as both DAC and preamp. But that said, that arrangement will not sound as good as using a DAC plus dedicated pre-amplifier with current buffer with higher output voltages, those usually give more grunt to the sound, more meat on the bones. This is just a first help. Maybe if you're just creating a system, you can use it as both DAC slash preamp with power amp or active speakers, but true preamp inserted in between these components will improve the sound quality. So now let me quickly connect it so I can show you the front panel. Knob has a nice clicky feeling when rotated. It also doubles as a button when you press it. So by using it, you can actually do everything you need to do with a DAC. You can change inputs, volume, browse menus, etc. But all of that is also very easily done from your couch by a remote control that's plastic, but it feels very decent. I always appreciate when a manufacturer provides a remote, especially when you have some settings that you can tinker with. And in this case, you do. And while talking about a remote control, let me quickly show you what you can use it for. First and... Uh, most important thing to turn the DAC on or off. Uh, then secondly, to choose inputs. And as you can see, only coaxial is connected right now. And because of that, you can see sample rate of the incoming signal. But you can also do a few other interesting things. For example, you can change the illumination level of the display. Level one is the dim one, medium, the lightest one and automatic L4. And that's a nice thing to have. Furthermore, you can choose if you want to have only RCA output active, only XLR output active, or both of them at the same time. If uh, the D30 Pro is in a preamp mode, you can control the volume. You can see that on the display. I put it in a pure DAC mode at the moment, so I will not be showing you that, but the interesting thing is the topping let you choose one of nine digital filters. Now, I'm actually a little bit puzzled here because in the manual it says it has five of the digital filters. But a very interesting thing, at least for me, is while topping says that filter number one, two, three, four are your normal digital oversampling filters, like linear, uh, minimum phase, slow, fast, etc. Number five is actually 
a non oversampling mode and in in my case i actually noticed that number 5 sounded a little bit sweeter with a little bit less high frequency extension but at the same time losing some definition and some resolution other filters i notice a small or no difference at all uh, I think that number two, which is actually the default factory filter, is the most open, the brightest sounding one. I actually slightly preferred number one or number three. Uh, and as I mentioned, number five, that is no, non oversampling one, is the sweetest sounding one, but you lose a little bit of precision and a little bit of resolution in the process. Some of you might really enjoy that, so it's really nice that Topping gave us a choice. So just try them out for yourself. See if you hear anything at all. If not, who cares? Leave the default one. And the last option I forgot to mention actually is screen auto off function. So if you put this to A, uh, C, it will automatically turn off after 30 seconds of inactivity. If you put it to A0, it means it will stay on at all times, so you can see sample rates, selected inputs, and so on. But all of this said and done, how does it actually sound? And I'll start by saying it sounds nothing like the original D30, which means first it sounds much more resolving, there's much more details dug out of a recording. Also, it sounds wider, more spacious, taller, and among other things with better layering and almost everything that you can imagine, it's better on D30 Pro than on D30, but that's expected really. It's a 400 bucks DAC. So let's talk a little bit about its own qualities, tonality, etc. First of all, I noticed that the bass line is quite weighty. It goes deep, it has very decent energy and grunt. And um, if anything, the bass line is maybe slightly on the warmer side of things. It definitely prioritizes weight and fullness more than being like nimble and quick and starting and stopping very fast. So we are definitely talking about nice and full sounding weighty bass line and I quite liked it. it. It's not a slouch either, it's not the kind of bass line that will just melt everything into it and be overwhelmingly uh, prominent and broomy and things like that. No, it's very nice, disciplined, deep but weighty bass line. But moving up the frequency spectrum, character, tonality changes a little bit, at least in my opinion and to my ears, because mid-range and higher frequencies, they do not have this same type of fullness and warmth. If anything, they are a little bit on a brighter side, on a more analytical side of things. Uh, that creates for an interesting voicing, really because we have that nice weighty bottom, but then we have very open and bright mid-range and higher spectrum. And when I listen to vocals and instruments, I actually feel that D30 Pro is emphasizing tone texture and details inside of tone more than the actual tone density, than the actual tone body. I'm saying that about mid-range and higher frequencies. When it comes to deeper bass, there is plenty of weight and body. But if I listen to a vocal, I definitely hear more huskiness or more sandiness than I hear full bodiness. And um, same things with the highest spectrum. Things like cymbals, tiny strings, percussions are brimming with details. Everything sounds very sparkly and very crisp, but it's definitely not sweet. It's not dark or tame in any way. It's actually a little bit on the brighter side. 
that also means that D30 Pro brings out a lot of air from the recording because those highest register is what contains a lot of air and atmosphere and things like that. But there are more to, to D30 Pro that I really want to talk about. And uh, one thing is the sound staging. I, I definitely think that D30 Pro might be a class leading back when it comes to sound staging because it's really spacious. Now, sound stage to my ears is wide. It's also tall. There's very decent depth to it. It's definitely not flat, not two dimensional in any way. Layering is also really nice. Each instrument has a nice positioning. There is enough space around them. And that's just great. Uh, the thing that I don't find that great is actual dynamics and energy of edges and transients, things like that. It doesn't really have much energy and much bite. So, for example, um, if there is a deep bass note, you feel the weight, there is enough grunt to it. But if there is an instrument that needs that mid-range energy, let's say drums, like smaller drums, and you want to hear that slam, that pam, D30 Pro is not giving you much of that. It gives you the texture, it gives you the details, you hear everything clearly, it positions instruments very precisely, but it doesn't have that slam, that kick factor. And that especially goes with the mid-range. Uh, just mid-range lacks some density, some fullness and some energy to it, in my opinion. And to best illustrate what I'm talking about, I'll compare it with some more affordable decks with some closest competitors at the same price range and then some more expensive decks. Now, first of all, it's like a logical comparison to Topping's more affordable offering. So, for example, Topping E30 and D50S. Now, compared to both of these, D30 Pro is a clear step up. It sounds better, livelier, more detailed, with more extension in both bass region and in highest spectrum. Again, even if you add uh, linear power supplies to D50S or E30, they cannot compete with D30 Pro. This one just spreads a sound stage better, it layers better, it has more extension on both sides. It's simply a better sounding DAC. And one of my favorite uh, budget DACs is actually a LogG D30, and I really like this one. It's 170 US dollars, I think. It sounds great, spacious. Um, it's uh, involving for that amount of money. What I definitely, it's my go-to recommendation when anybody asks about around 200 bucks DAC. This one and uh, Kada Stone 2 Pro are two of my favorite ones in that price range. But compared to D30 Pro, you definitely notice some loss of resolution. This one sounds a little bit more melted. Instruments are not as well separated and also, extension, bass line is not that authoritative. It's not that firm and weighty as with D30 Pro. Uh, same thing for the highest spectrum. It's really good on LogG D30, but it's not as extended, is not as crisp and revealing as with D30 Pro. And that leads me to a much more fair comparison like direct competitor, uh, SMSL SU9, costing the same, actually. Uh, that one is based on a Sabre DAC chip, and it definitely offers like more striking sound. What SU9 is giving you is more punchy presentation. It's more in your face. When it comes to dynamics, they're better. 
it's just livelier sounding one. Also transients, like leading edges of notes, contain a little bit more energy, they're a little bit faster. But on the other hand, D30 Pro creates more spacious soundstage and it layers better. SU9 is a little bit congested between speakers. It has more dynamic synergy zest. It's like livelier sounding back, but everything happens in a smaller, more cramped space. So if you really want to hear wider space, better organized instruments inside of that space, D30 Pro is doing that better. And this is really where things get tough. I cannot choose the winner <laughs> between these two. And that actually leads me to the last part of these comparisons. Uh, what happens if you compare D30 Pro to slightly more expensive DACs, such as SMSL M400 or Dana Fripp's RS2? Um, I'm comparing it to these because I haven't heard uh, toppings flagships like D90. But um, I can with SMSL M400, for example. That is like twice the price. And for that, you do get a smoother sounding back. Um, Mid-range is fuller, juicier, and all that higher spectrum, everything from mid-bass and higher, sound more liquid, is smoother, more natural. In comparison to that, D30 Pro is almost grainy a little bit. You would probably not notice that if you're coming only from more affordable decks, or if this is your first deck. But if you actually venture often to a more pricier decks, you tend to notice these small differences. Um, tonally, they're also quite different. M400 emphasizes a little bit of bass and mid-bass oomph, and that's giving like very pleasant warmth to the mid-range. And then you count in that sweet upper mid-range and highest frequencies, slightly tamer, and it has that really, really smooth and easygoing character, while D30 Pro sounds a little bit brighter, a little bit grainier, as I said when it comes to vocals and mid-range, not as dense, not as full-bodied. But in terms of sheer details, micro-details, um, the uh, atmosphere retrieval, it's actually really, really good. My personal taste, I would always choose M400 easily because I just like its tonality, I like its smoothness, I like the way it renders vocals and that full bodiness, but D30 Pro did not embarrass itself in that comparison. And um, again, similar story when I compared it to Dana Fripp's RS2. These two are actually more similar in tonality than uh, M400, because RS2 is also slightly brighter up top. It has a touch of dryness up top, but compared to RS2, D30 Pro goes even further in that direction. That means that highest frequencies are even brighter, even more prominent, and sound a little bit drier and grainier. And when it comes to mid-range, it cannot match the density of uh, RS2. It does not have the same full bodiness. So D30 Pro leans more heavily on that side of digging textures and digging details, while RS is a little bit more restrained on that front while offering somewhat fuller, denser mid-range. And basically more natural tonality, like richer tone timbre. Again, it's nothing to hold against D30 Pro because it's almost twice cheaper than RS2, if anything, it's actually a good thing that I can compare D30 Pro to these DACs and conclude that I feel it's lacking here and there, but it's never embarrassing itself. And uh, in terms of those highest frequencies with their 
slightly brighter and more forward character, I sometimes even felt the D30 Pro can dig a little bit more of tiny details compared to ours. And with that, it's probably time to wrap up this video and make a conclusion. Some things it does on a class leading levels, like sound staging, is great. It's, it, it comes very close to Dana Fripp's RS2, which is great in doing that. In my mind, it trumps basically all other competitors in its own price range that are using Sabre or AK chips. It just sounds more spacious to me. But I'm not that huge fan of its tonality that mixes like nice weighty deep bass but slightly brighter and drier highest frequency spectrum. But that gives it its own character, that gives it its very revealing sparkly character. And finally, if we are speaking about dynamics, about energy, that's not really one of its strong suits. What can I say? It's a really, really good product. It's not something that I would recommend to everybody. If you don't like that brighter top region, if you want your music to have a lot of energy, a lot of bite, it might not be for you. But if you really appreciate great sound staging, layering, digging a lot of details while being dynamically laid back, it might be just what you're looking for. It didn't blow my mind, it didn't obliterate the competition, but it's another really, really good deck. It's definitely worth considering, because as I mentioned, with some things, it's basically a class leading deck. And with that, it's time to end this video. Um, I hope you have all the info you need to decide if D30 Pro is the DAC for you or not. Now, if you like the video, then click that button, share it with your friends. If you really appreciate the work I'm doing here on this channel, then consider becoming a patron maybe. Big thanks to all the patrons already. And see you next time. Bye.